I have one that I'd like to just uh, uh, clarify. Um, on item five, page 12 of the minute, um, the strategic risk register, um, we're, we're heading towards a, a workshop on that in October. And um, I think it was important that one of our committee members, uh, Councillor Bell, for yourself to meet with officers. And you'd also uh, kindly shared um, a circulation for us uh, in the meantime. I just want to make sure that actually happens before we get to the workshop. Can somebody indicate whether that's um, happened or in, in train? No, that that's actually happened. I had a had a quite a useful chat, so yeah, that's 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 good for me. Thank you. And uh, so the the information that I that I forward is 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 being digested, and um, hopefully it'll actually make for a um, for a a, a, a productive uh, workshop. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bell. Um, okay, so um, I've got there's just a couple of typos, and I'll I'll raise those with with Derek. Um, just so that the, that that bit's tidied up. Otherwise, we're we're content with the minute. Um, okay, if we can move on to item four, which is the business planner, pages seventeen and eighteen. Um, Alex, did you want to take us through this? Yeah, uh, yeah, I can do can do chair. Yeah, we've got um, only got two reports on the agenda today. Uh, one of the one one the audit Scotland report we only bring if, if there is active activity in, in that regard and over the last few months there's, there's not been the, the same level of audit Scotland reports as, as as they would normally do throughout the year and then the, the second thing is uh, the review of the code of conduct and, and we're going to bring that back in November um, and, 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 the, and the legal team are working on that for the next meeting you've got you know the, the, there's a you know the list there and, and are, we're working with our way through that as, as it sits at the moment um i did there might be I, I i need to have a look at the finance side of things in terms of whether i maybe bring that in november as well but uh, that's something that i'll need to see once uh, once i get once i get the financial results uh, through to determine where best that might sit whether it be the igb or, or the or the risk audit and performance systems committee so the rest of the stuff is, is, is we're, we're working our way through, uh, and and I guess I guess one of the things that we're potentially seeing at the moment is that in, in terms of this agenda and, and and maybe even the next agenda is we're seeing that you know we 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 done we did a lot of business through the IGB and so on, but some 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 of the recurring business that normally comes to risk audit and performance takes is taking a bit of time just to just to start picking up again, whether that be the audit Scotland reports or the reports from our internal audit colleagues. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks very much. Um, yes, that that point about the finance monitoring, so it'll either come to the IGB or to ourselves because uh, you end of September you'll have the half year. Um, through so that, that's good. Thank you. Um, any comments or questions uh, on this? Okay, I'm not seeing anybody signalling. Um, so that's that's fine. Chair, so, Chair, Chair, Chair Luan. Luan has oh, Luan. Up. Yeah. You're on mute, Luan. That's you now, I think. OK, it, it was just a, a question about hosted services and whether um, the annual reporting will come through the RAP committee or has there been a, a decision um, on, on where we'll, we'll see hosted reporting, um, Alex? Not as far as I'm aware of at the moment uh, about where it is. It, it was certainly last time we took it through in a workshop environment at the IGB and we had a, a kind of covering report at the IGB in that regard. I think uh, one of the when the, the chief officers are, are are looking at this in terms of how they how they get that assurance over to the to the IGB. So it is it's certainly been worked on, but in terms of where we actually take it to no decision at the moment. OK, thanks. OK, thank you for that, uh, Luan. Uh, and so, Derek, if you can just minute that that question was asked and then that will come back to uh, an appropriate meeting. Um, OK, thank you. Noted. Um, 
not seeing anybody else signaling so if we can uh, then then note the business planner thank you and that takes us to item five which is the um, directions report again alex if you can uh, uh, take us through this please yeah um so so the, the directions are, are are the way that the igb does business uh, really um we, we can't we can't really co uh, um, commission things through 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 the IGB, and and therefore we have to direct our partners, which are the council and the NHS, to go and commission and, and deliver on directions on our on our behalf. Um, as a, as an IGB, we we're probably one of the first IGBs in Scotland to kind of really use the directions, and and, and we we kind of moved forward on that that basis. We also kind of we also developed a process for you know, for tracking directions and so on. And, and, and one part of the process that we hadn't really completed uh, was the, that bit in terms of the report back. So so this, this report, you know, reports back on, on what's happened with some with the directions as it sets. I would say, well, that, you, it, you know, this is like stage one in this sort of process and, and, there, and there, there may be further improvements that need to be made. In, in this regard, and that's certainly something that we'll we'll, we'll take comments back from from the committee and 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 and, and, and seek to to deal with that going forward. But I think this is actually quite a useful document in terms of it gets us to a point where we close down some of the directions that that are there, so that we're only concentrating on reporting back on the directions that are still yeah, live and 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 and, 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 and still in in, in in a force. Um, so, so, so when when we went through the the, the document and, and the directions tracker, a number of these directions are annual directions or directions that are superseded in future years by 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 other directions. So we were able to kind of close them down, and and largely our, our directions have been around about our transformation program or our commissioning or our budget. We haven't actually had any directions at the moment which are non-financial but there is a there is a chance that at some point in time that we may need to direct council or, or the nhs to, to to do something that doesn't have a financial consequence but as a kind of policy kind of uh, context so so from here um we went through these and um, we categorized them as complete or um or ongoing and the ongoing ones are still valid and, and it's still being operated on it and we're still working our way through them but the, the complete ones are either complete because the dates expired or there's been another direction that's sub superseded them uh, and, 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 and effectively closed that one off. So I, I think what we've now got here is, is, a, is, a, is a useful starting point um, and, and, and a welcome comment from the from the committee so that we can uh, improve improve our, our, our monitoring of this in, in, in future. And, and, and then that'll certainly be helpful for officers because having to kind of monitor on the number of directions that were in play at that point in time that would have really sucked up a lot of our resource but if we could just kind of stick with the ones that are ongoing then that, that would be helpful. Okay thank you very much for that and thanks for the work uh, to bring it to this stage um, I think that's helpful so can I just open it up for comments and questions please? Uh, Councillor Samurai. Thanks Chair. Um, I found it a terribly useful document to see all the directions that have come through um, and thank the team for, for putting that together. Um, one of the things I, I was curious about is for the directions that are still ongoing, I noticed that there is some narrative for some of them and not for others. And I, I just wondered if I could have a, a, an explanation of why that is. Um, I mean, it might be something as simple as, you know, there's nothing more to say than it's ongoing, but I mean, if I could get some clarity around that point. Okay, thank you, Alex. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so on, on some of the ongoing ones where um, I had some information relatively easy to hand, then I, I, I put in some narrative but I, uh, particularly the ones that are funded from PISA. Really, really what we've now got to a stage of is our ongoing ones are really our commissioning as in the commissioning stuff that we do on a regular basis and it's just kind of rolled into our business as usual or the, 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 the things that are in regard to um, the, the kind of transformation projects that are still ongoing and, and by transformation projects I'm, I'm, I'm talking about now I suppose PSIP Action 15 and ADP 
So, so the majority of the rest of that stuff is now kind of mainstreamed and just making its way through our, our, our normal processes. But that's the ones that are there. We, uh, uh, going forward, what, 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 what my intention would be, would be to have more narrative on the ongoing ones so that you could, you know, get a little bit of, a little bit of an update around about that. Um, but, but what my fear was in, in terms of how it's actually set at, it's, it's at, at the moment is that when we send this out, uh, to, to, to officers to seek to update. There's just so many of them that they don't know where to start. So certainly in future, I would be looking at having a little bit more detail around the ongoing ones. And the, and the ones that I have been able to put some some detail behind are, 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 are ones that, that I, I was aware of or I'd searched up it because I was interested in them myself. So certainly a good point from Council where I'll summarise and something that we'll pick up on uh, in future iterations. Okay, thank you. That, thank you. Thanks for that, Chair. Um, I mean, I, I I think as you said, it is a it's a really good starting point. It was very useful to see that, and it's good that we've been able to close off some of those directions so that when we see um, um, future drafts of us or future future um, reports from you, that it's only the ongoing stuff that we'll be looking at. So thanks very much for that again. Okay, um, Councillor Bell. Thank you, Chair. Um, so uh, an observation and a question. So the observation is um, the first two color, the first two rows uh, have been repeated on the on the, um, the directions chart. Um, probably feels like you've been doing lots of work, Alex, but uh, um, yeah, so, so uh, that's for implementing the integration scheme. See that. So, so the 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 um uh, the that that one. So, the first two the first two rows. I think um one is to and it's and it's probably it's not mentioned within here. Uh, and 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 again, well, that was because it was the first direction that's ever there. But one was to NHS Grampian and one was to ACC. So basically, the the, the first one was a a direction to any uh, ACC to deliver on the you know the IGB would deliver on the the, the scheme of integration that had had been agreed, and then the other one was to the NHS Grampian to do the same. So, 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 so that that's a little bit. It's, it's, it's not particularly clear in, in, in the document as it sits at the moment. But there were two directions there, and these ones are still ongoing. And I, I suspect what we'll do is we'll keep these ones ongoing until we uh, until we have the lab, um, until we revise our integration scheme, and then once the point at the time where we revise our integration scheme. Well, we will close off these two directions and then move into uh, in, into a new set of directions, which will be agreed at, at the same point of the integration schemes agreed. So, 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 so that's the background to that one. But that's they're they're the they're the two longest standing ones because that's what you know the IGB is about delivering the integration scheme and and and, and therefore they're and they're still live at the moment. Some of some of the information in regard to the earlier ones, we were just you know uh, getting the process. Uh, right at that point in time. So some of the regard to the, the, the earlier ones maybe aren't quite as succinct as, as what's got further down. Um, because at, at one point, you know, at that point in time, the, the process that we developed just now didn't exist. So the, the eighth column, the colour coded one, indicates whether it's NHS or ACC. Is that yeah. is, is that the, the question that you had, Councillor Bell? Um, no, no, the, I, I, I hadn't actually spotted that because when I, what I, I said that both, that I said that the row, that there were two rows of repeated chair, um, and I understand what uh, I, I did actually, didn't actually spot the ACC nor the NHSG, um, but chair. If I look in the one, two, three, one, two, the fifth column, they've both got the same task number, which is IJB one six zero four one six. Isn't that the date it was approved? Yeah, that, that's the IG. Yeah, that was the IG. It was approved. That uh, that was the the first IG. Oh, All right. So, oh, okay. All right. Well, okay. That was a dark bloody question. It really, was a dark bloody question. Um. So my so my question for you uh, then is um. So the, so clearly the, the, this is actually detailing um. Uh, services. Uh, you know, uh, as we go on with. with this. Transformation, right?
can't see phlebotomy. Should I see phlebotomy there? Because that's one of the services, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, the, 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 the directions as they sit at the moment, I mean, that, that one there is like an all encompassing direction, uh, is what I would say, is these two there cover a, a number of services and, and phlebotomy would be included within there. But the, the, the only reason that you would potentially see phlebotomy in this list here is if we decided to do something different with that phlebotomy service and it required a direction to the NHS grant period to go in either change or, or put additional staff in there and, and we had identified funding to go and do it. So the bottom may well be included within that, that base in, in, in the first two, but we haven't actually specified out in that all the services that were, that were delegated through the integration scheme. Right, so if I could have a supplemental please, Chair. The, so at the moment, uh, I know that um, there is a phlebotomy nurse at the course medical practice. Um, you run phlebotomy at the um, at the, the health centre in town, um, and um, I think the phlebotomy so the phlebotomy service in, in Colts runs very well. You know, locals rock up to it, make a meaning for them, and there was a question of integrating that into your main service, which struck me as being counterproductive. So that's that would be the sort of thing that I might be interested in actually exploring. Yeah, so, so phlebotomy has been uh, something that we've been interested in for some time uh, in, in terms of where that service sits and, and, and so on. And you are right, within the local GP practices, as, you know, there are phlebotomists at the moment taking taking blood and, and so on. And we're also, we also look at what's happening within the, um, the, the city because there has been there has been discussions in the past about centralising some, some resource to allow um, you know, phlebotomy to be undertaken at an area where the, um, you know, where the population is, the population demand. So if you were in, you know, if you were in, for instance, some in the town centre, it might be useful. If you worked in the town centre and you needed to get blood, it might be useful to give blood there. And then it could be the results of that blood test could be passed on to any of the GP practices within the city. So that's certainly something we've looked at in the past. One of the things that we, we, we we're looking at going forward is around about yeah, some of uh, um, some of some of these services such as that uh, and, and how that 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 would uh, how that could be managed within the locality. So we've been looking at something called a CTAC, which will take on some some services such as phlebotomy. I'm not sure if phlebotomy is in the scope of that as, as it sits at the moment, but certainly that's one of the things that we'll be looking at around about that and that that's funded from uh, the the piece of money that came in so the primary care improvement plan funded so so i i think there might there will be information that comes back to the igb in due course about ctac and and, and that info bought me may well be one of the services that's in there and um, but I, I can't say for 100 percent sure i would have to go and look back through my files just to double check that but it's certainly it's something that we're looking at. okay thank you thank you Anything else, Councillor Bell? No. OK. Um, Luan. Thanks, uh, John, and, and I, I agree. It's a really helpful to see the directions tracker here, and we're certainly much further ahead than other IJBs. When I hear the discussions around the chair and vice chairs group, there's other areas that are not as advanced in how they use directions. So we're definitely in a very good place. Um, so I've, I've got a comment and then a couple of questions, if that's OK. My first thing is just, it's coming to wrap, how I understand it is it's coming here so that we can provide a bit of scrutiny that directions are being actioned um, appropriately and timiously according to the, the dates on, on, on that. So I wonder if that's correct, and I, I think I'm not, not hearing it's not, that maybe if we looked at the status um, section, I wondered if we had one that was complete, which is, um, it's Jill was suggesting that we, we don't really need to see them, they could be shifted off. And the ones that are in progress, if they could be sort of um, given a colour coding of, you know, the ones that are green that are just progressing and then maybe amber or red, so that when it comes here, we look at the red ones and we, we, we provide some questioning around if something's overdue, why is that or what the barriers are. And would, would that be a helpful thing, Alex, to, to categorise the status in that way to help make sure we focus on the ones where, where you know, where, where it's overdue or where there may be challenges. 
yeah, I'm happy to have a look at that. As I say, I've got no no hang ups either way around about about what's happening in, in terms of there. I, I just I think I feel that what we've got here is you know a stage where stage one, and, and if we need to make that change in the same sort of way as adding a bit more narrative, and then I'm happy to consider both these options. Okay, great, thank you. And then my other two bits are. When I saw this, I was remembering that Scottish Government introduced new statutory guidance around what should be contained in directions in, in January this year. Um, and I just wanted to check that, you know, so the RAP's looking at the whether they've been actioned, but actually, is there, is there, how do we get assurance that we're writing them in the correct way and they're containing all the right information? You know, are we using the template from government as a, as a standard guide for how we do them, um, Alex? Um, yeah, I mean, I think um, the stuff that we had done, I, I suspect, it probably influenced the, the the guidance that came out. To be honest, um, so 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 the, what, what, the last time I had a look at that guidance, there was very little of it that we hadn't we hadn't closed off. Um, there may have been, you know, one bit um, that that. I, I can't remember for, for what it was, but there may have been one little bit, but the rest of it was, you know, we were we were on top of it, and our process and and, and uh, template covered covered the vast majority of what the guidance was seeking. And it is, I guess, it is only guidance at the end of the day. So if, if it doesn't if it doesn't work for us, then then we can we can decide to go in a different way. But certainly, when we had a look at it at that point in time, there was none jumping out at me that said we had to change our processes immediately. OK, so so that's that's been looked at. That's good. And then my final question was just looking at the ones we've currently got. If I'm reading it right, there's one around pharmacy um, and the, it's, which seems to be, well, I don't know if it's overdue or, or due around about now. And, and there's a figure of 316,000 next to it. So I just wanted to understand a bit more what that was about. And, you know, are there is there a cost implication coming um, and is that being actioned? Yeah, so that that one will be the additional support for pharmacy in the in the GP practices, uh, and it is funded through PISA. And, and you are right, there is a date on there that's that that that's passed or, um, or or is or is nearly passed. And and again, and, and my suspicion is the reason for that is that, um, you know, just pulling back up these these services and in, 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 in the IGB around about that. So we are looking at our piece up again, and that would fall within there, and, and there would be an approval from there. But there's no issue in regard to the money for that because it's staffing costs uh, that, that are recurrent and then it's funded from the piece up budget. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Okay, thank you. I don't see anybody else uh, signaling. Um, so I, I just had a couple of uh, quick questions um, on this. Um, and I see we've got Colin on the, the call as well, but this was linked to an audit. So does, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, so does that satisfy um, and conclude that, that aspect of the, the audit requirement? Uh, yes, thank you. It uh, it does. I was just to wait update that uh, on our follow up system to, to say that it has been discussed and, uh, and reviewed. Um, yeah, it'd be good to see how that develops going forward. It sounds like a good idea to have a sort of exception monitoring if that's what you decide to go with. Um, but yes, this has presented a, a list of uh, of all the actions, uh, directions that have gone out and where we are with them. So very pleased with that. Um, and uh, in terms of the, the Scottish Government guidance, when we did the audit, we, we did take account of some of the draft version of that guidance. Um, and generally speaking, we were quite happy that that was taking place, all the requirements of that were being met. Um, it was generally just tweaking bits and pieces to make sure that we had the appropriate uh, rationale, for example, um, and uh, and this element, which is the, the monitoring of it. So yeah, we're, we're pleased with that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Colin, and, and thanks. And that will Alex. close off that action. Yeah, good. And, um, well, thanks, Alex, for bringing that to a conclusion as well. Can I just ask you, Alex, then, what would be your intention in terms of um, reporting again on this is is this an annual thing or biannual or what 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 would you think? Uh, my, my feeling would be every six months. Um, I think quarterly might you might not see the movement that you potentially want. 
Uh, whereas I think every six months, if, 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 if the committee were in agreement, that's when when we be thinking about bringing it back and bringing it in there uh, into the into the. Okay, thanks. That I think that would be helpful as well, given that you've you've kind of caught up with all of this, and the, the next version will have fewer items and that bit more narrative, uh, as as Councillor Samurai said, and um, possibly the kind of colour coding that that Luan's talked about. Um, Okay, uh, is everybody happy that that's six monthly then? Um, from the committee? Yeah, that's okay. good. Um, and thanks for all the contributions. I think it's important when we get something new like this that we do get our head around it. So, so all of those contributions have been helpful. Thank you. Um, okay, if we can go on to well, in terms of the the minute then, uh, Derek. Uh, if you can indicate that that concludes the, the audit, if you can capture that aspect as well, please. Thank you, Chair. The recommendations are that the committee note the contents of this report. Can I suggest that in addition to note the contents of the report, that the committee note the closure of the referenced audit recommendations at the same time, and that this report be returned six monthly to the committee? Okay, that, that's great. Thank you very much. Yes, is that um, accepted by the committee? Those are recommendations. Yeah, agree. Okay, thank yes. you. Okay. Thank you. Um, if we can go on to the next item, which is the transformation. Um, yeah, I'm just scrolling through this. So the transformation evaluation. Um, so I, I see we've got Callum here and, and he's going to provide um, a presentation as well on this. Um, who else is here um, for speaking to this report? Um, Alison is uh, also here um, to answer uh, any additional questions that um, that the board, the board might have. Um, and one of the other programme managers, Susie Downey, who is responsible for some of the flash reports that are contained within the report is also available in case there are any um, specific questions that arise uh, from the discussion. OK, thank you. So welcome to, to all of you for that. So can I hand over to you, Callum? Do you want to go straight into this or does Alison want to say anything first? Um, I'm happy to go straight into it. Um, and as you've stated, I've got some slides which I thought might be helpful for, for context to um, describe the, the, the paper um, and then we can open it up for any further questions uh, if the board have anything additional they would like to ask. OK, thank you. OK, so I will just uh, I'll just share my screen just now. And um, really the purpose of this is it's a brief overview looking at um, how we how we evaluate um, our transformation, thinking about how we've done this in the past thinking about how this might need to change uh, moving forward. So the first thing that I wanted to do is provide a little bit of context um, as to the situation that we find ourselves in. So you will all be aware that um, we, when we think back in February, we had our um, five programmes of transformation. We had a variety of priorities that were encapsulated within them. We obviously had our medium term financial framework, which contains some of the um, objectives uh, from the leadership team and we of course had our performance data dashboard which I'm sure you're all very well versed in and um, which helped us evidence the cumulative impact of all of these uh, priorities. Fast forward to March we all know about the COVID situation and over the subsequent months we had um, a variety of transformations that we embedded during the COVID um, period as a response to that pandemic that was things like uh, our scale up of near me, uh, moving GMEDs into the health village and increasing our hospital home capacity. So more recently, we've obviously been in this scenario whereby we are living with COVID and as such, uh, as a partnership, we have refreshed our priorities in terms of what do we need to do moving forward. Now, some of these priorities are actually uh, previous priorities from uh, February, which we had to pause so we could focus on our COVID response. Um, these are delineated within the paper themselves and of course they already align to our performance data dashboard, which you've all seen previously. So what I propose to do rather than going through that in any great detail is to give 
a little bit of focus on maybe some of our uh, emerging priorities that are as a result of living with COVID. And these fall under the portfolio of Operation Home First, which is uh, going to be the focus of uh, what I'm going to speak about today. So this slide basically shows um, the strategic context of Operation Home First. This is a cross-system collaboration between um, Aberdeen City, Aberdeen Shire, Maury Health and Social Care Partnerships, and also the uh, acute sector as well. And this has emerged uh, as a result of uh, some of the effective cross-system working that has uh, been developed during COVID. So, Home First has a variety of different priorities, some occurring at local levels and some occurring regionally. So we think about Aberdeen City, we obviously have our new care at home contract implementation. We have our stepped care approach and there are a variety of uh, pan grampian priorities that Aberdeen City are also taking the lead on. These are things like the redesign of our frailty pathway and um, the scale up of near me as well. And collectively, uh, we're hoping that the cumulative impact of all these is to positively impact on three big aims. This is around supporting early discharge back home, um, avoiding unnecessary hospital attendance or admission, and maintaining people safely at home. And I'm sure that uh, the board can, can see that there are clear alignments between the, these aims of Operation Home First and uh, Aberdeen City Strategic Plan and the main aims around that, thinking about prevention, thinking about keeping people resilient, uh, personalization, connections and communities. So, as I mentioned, there are a variety of priorities which fall underneath this Home First uh, umbrella. And in terms of evidence and the impact of this, there are really fundamentally three kind of key phases. The first is mapping each of these priorities to the aims so we can understand to what degree each of the priorities are likely to impact on each of the aims. We then need to have a, a much deeper understanding about each of the priorities individually. We need to understand what stage they're at. We need to understand whether they're occurring at scale, when they're likely to be implemented. And only once we've done this can we synthesize the cumulative impact of this. So as a result of this Home First portfolio, the four chief officers um, asked me to help them write a commission to evidence the impact of this uh, portfolio in its entirety. And um, the details of which are embedded within the report. And um, so I propose in the last slide just to kind of talk over um, the high level conceptual evaluation framework, um, which uh, as we speak is being worked through and uh, developed up in more detail. So we've spoken about the portfolio, we've spoken about the key aims and identified some of the key priority areas. We've spoken about the, the need to map each of these priorities against the aims. And once we've done this, we can have a better understanding about what are the types of data and um, infrastructure that we fundamentally need to put in place to evidence the impact of this. This is going to be a, a reasonably complex undertaking. It's going to likely span beyond some of the traditional um, data collection sources that we used previously, and there is likely going to need to be emergent and new data collection sources. Um, this is going to probably move beyond our traditional uh, counting of numbers and um, a lot more of a qualitative exploration as well, so we can understand uh, from the impact of our service users, from our citizens and of our staff, the impact that these changes make on them. And there's going to be a variety of different um, measurement techniques, um, some of which are embedded within the report that's going to comprise of your deep dive case study type approaches and to your higher level performance monitoring. And really fundamentally, the output of this is going to be two key things. The first one is going to be the development of a performance dashboard. This is going to be a meaningful performance dashboard, which after going through um, the systematic process and having a deeper understanding about each of the priorities individually, can we then understand, well, what would be the collective impact of them and as such, the more meaningful performance metrics that we'd want to be looking at. And then the second thing we'll be looking at a synthesized report. This can help us understand about the individual components themselves, thinking about what worked well, what might we want to improve moving forward, and thinking about how we would like to potentially prioritize our areas of focus moving forward. So that was um, all I wanted to speak to you about, just to give um, a little bit of flavor into the, the broader context. Um, and uh, at this stage, I'm happy to uh, open up to any questions that anyone uh, may have. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Callum. Um, 
So, uh, Councillor Bell. Thank you, Chair. Um, Callum, that, um, that was a, a quite an interesting overview. Um, I'm, 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 I'm interested actually in, in um, how, this, how the near me um, uh, system works. Um, I, I know, you know, it, it's so it's for doctor for a GP, for instance, to actually visit a person virtually in their living room. But what, what, how does that physically work? What does the what does the, the the patient actually have to have available for this service to work? So I can I I can answer that, and then if I have extended uh, colleagues that want to come in and add additional narrative, then that's fine. Um, basically, they need some form of uh, internet connection, whether that is a uh, smartphone or a laptop or or something something like this. And um, basically, they will be uh, given a link to almost like an online platform, essentially, uh, that they'll go on to uh, submit their details, and then there's almost like a virtual waiting room whereby they see that they see that clinician. So it's a reasonably standardised platform and uh, it can be used across clinical groups. So for example, um, it is not just uh, general practitioners that use this platform. There are a range of colleagues in both primary and secondary care that use this. So it's reasonably, um, it's reasonably straightforward uh, to, to use and basically just requires an, an internet connection um, to, uh, to access. But, uh, thank you. So a supplemental question then. Um, that, that's how I thought it would have worked. So what, so what, what actually happens then um, if uh, it's an older person? So in, in my ward, Lower D side, um, it, the Lower D side has the highest number of, of older folk in percentage terms compared to the rest of the city who don't have smartphones, who don't have computers. So presumably near me doesn't work for them. And they have to have a physical um, visit. So, you know, so in, in that case, be a bit like they do in Lothian, say, where the GP just turns up, with, they put up, they don their PPE and they go in and do the examination. So is that, is, is that still presumably happening? Yeah, so um, I see Alison's got her hand up, but um, I'll, I'll answer a bit of that first. So really um, what we've been trying to do is, is, is change how people access services. So um, in the ideal situation, they use the telephone first when, when they can in terms of having, having a conversation. If an individual is required to be viewed for whatever reason, then you'd use near me. And if there's a requirement for a physical examination, then that would be done in person. You're absolutely right. There will be particular cohorts of the population that uh, this may not be appropriate for. And in those situations, um, physical examinations, if that's the most appropriate, are still um, are still being offered. Um, there probably is a more fundamental question, and this may be a bigger piece of work, which is around um, elderly individuals and technology and actually enabling those particular cohorts who maybe aren't as technologically literate as other cohorts to actually um, to actually use them. Uh, but yes, those other avenues are still are still open. It's about really what's the most appropriate care for for the appropriate person at the appropriate time. Um, but I'll let Alison uh, come in and add anything additional over the top of that. No, Callum, I, I, I was uh, going to answer as, uh, along similar lines, um, you know, that, 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 that near me is it is just part of of that, uh, you know, hear, see, feel approach. Um, you know, if it, if if the if the GP or indeed any other uh, practitioner um, or or clinician needs to, um, if if just hearing about a problem it, it is sufficient, then the telephone would be used. Um, if they need to see it, um, then we perhaps would use something along the the lines of the the kind of video link that 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 uh, Callum just discussed. Um, but if they have to feel it. Um, then it would be a, a, a safe uh, physical appointment um, that, that's uh, that's arranged for them. So um, I think you you, you probably covered all, all of that um, already. But just in terms of the 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 digital digital connection issue, um, you know, it's not not 
I guess it's just not about elderly uh, people, although uh, they, they do make up a, a cohort of, of perhaps our most digitally distanced um, population. Um, but but we also um, have um, the, the areas of, of deprivation to, to consider, you know, people who can't afford internet connections or who can't afford um, devices, etc. And of course, we've been trying to um, address some of those issues through through the um, Connecting Aberdeen uh, project in terms of um, getting uh, devices out to, to to people who who need them. So, um, but it is near me is just part of, of the bigger picture. It's not it's not the sole focus um, for uh, consultations going forward. Thank you. I, I mean, it's a great idea. Um, do you, um, very, very quickly, Chair, if I, if I can ask, so do you have any feedback on how effective it is from, from both clinicians and also from patients? In, in, so, in terms of, do the, you know, do the clinicians feel that, that they, you know, they, they can do the patient justice? Does the, does the patient feel they, they've been thwarted in inverted commas? I, I'm just curious. So there have been uh, various surveys done on on near me um, since since it was since it has been introduced quite widely, um, and the the feedback is all very positive. Um, you know the 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 only areas that have been highlighted are around you know what happens if I I, I don't have a device, um, you know, or I, I don't have a device to to connect, or I don't have a good internet connection, you know, the or in, any. Um, negative points if you like that have been raised and um, have been issues that we've already been aware of and are already working on on doing something uh, about it so i think it's something that's been very well received um by both uh, the individuals and by um by clinicians that, that themselves you know they're they're really welcoming it it's it's given a huge um flexibility to uh, and enable um, consultations to be undertaken um, and it's actually created capacity as well um, so I, I, I think it's been very positive from both sides. Callum I don't know if you want to come back in on, on that particular point. Yeah the only thing I would just add to that is that um, you'll be aware yourself people vote with their feet and if they uh, don't like something they won't use it and um, all of the um, you know, all, all of the feedback that we've had in terms of comparing different health board areas, Grampian remains one of the highest users of um, Near Me across across the country and has done consistently. Um, and what that demonstrates is that it is an acceptable service um, to both people, clinicians and service users. And um, there is um, currently underway a large national um, evaluation evidence of the impact of uh, near me so we're going to be linking in with that and having a better understanding about the types of things that they're doing but yeah just to echo Alison's point um, the feedback that we've had at the moment has been overwhelmingly positive. Thank you. Yeah that, that's me Chair, thank you. You're on mute, John. Oh, great. Sorry, Ruan. Thanks, John. Um, and thanks, Callum, for the presentation. I'm really supportive of, of the approach that you're taking and really important to build in evaluation at the start, which, which is what you're describing, and the importance of qualitative and quantitative together. So I think the idea of having a, a dashboard that takes in both those is very good. Um, a few questions just on that. So. When is that likely to be developed and done? Are you looking at like March next year kind of time? Am I, am I right in thinking that? Um, so in terms of uh, some form of performance dashboard, we would probably we would hope to have something up and running in the winter. I mean, the the, the caveat with that is that this will be an, an, an iterative process. We won't have a fully fledged final, you know, sparkly, shiny dashboard at that point. And this will be something which will emerge, which will which will emerge over time as we develop and integrate new data sources. And um, you'll know about all the challenges we've got with uh, with with data. And um, but so the immediate priority is the is, is is that detailed understanding about each of the constituent parts and thinking about how do they feed up into the into the greater into the greater whole. So that's something that which we will hope to have and um, probably by winter. And it will be a case of constantly refining that. Um, 
given some of the caveats that I mentioned about, you know, new data sources having to link different sources of, of, of data and that sort of thing. But those are the timelines that we would be aiming for, yes. Okay, okay. Um, so just linked to that then, you talked about the importance of getting feedback from, from service users and from carers. Will, will, will there be an increased expectation on services that they should be really proactively getting feedback from people, considering people might experience services very differently? And, and I just wondered how that's been messaged to services and what support they're maybe getting around how to do that that doesn't seem like an extra burden um, on people's you know, busy workloads. Yeah, so I mean, I, so I suppose that that's something I think from from the partnership side, that's certainly something which a lot of our services do anyway, um, because they understand that in terms of um, service evaluation and service improvement, one of the best ways to do that is is through feedback from your service users. So a lot of what a lot of what we'll be doing is is integrated into best practice that we would do anyway. You're right, there is a tension about being pragmatic with this. So whilst we want to produce something which is very robust and something which we be very confident in, we also have to appreciate the, the, the stresses and the pressures that staff are under. And this is where the, the, the nuance and the, the, the devils in the detail in terms of developing the, this infrastructure, which is incredibly simple to implement, which doesn't take a lot of time, but also adds a lot of value. So these are the conversations which we are beginning to have imminently about how can we integrate that? How can we build on what's already being done? And what are, what can we do that will add the greatest amount of impact, but also the least amount of additional pressure? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and I suppose I've got, I've got loads of different questions, but my, 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 my big question really is, it was really good to see the flash reports and, and I'm, hopefully if we've got time, we can speak about them in, in detail, but um, for me, it, and it's just what you're describing, we're getting lots of, it gives each bit of the, each flash report is a little bit of the puzzle, you know, it gives a little bit of the picture and it would be helpful for me to understand what the assumptions we're basing our activities on now. So, um, you know, and, and I suppose in really basic ways, you know, we've got a 210,000 population, how many of them are over 75 and, and and I suppose I'm thinking of the frailty pathway and the, it just it would help me to understand things like, you know, we know we've got 25 beds at ARI, but so therefore how much ho um, hospital at home do we therefore need and how will CTAC help that and, and just just map it, just just give that overview so that we're sure that we're covering, we're not losing it, we're not leaving any patient group behind and, and we're we're prioritizing the right things now based on what we know based on what we know which may change of course but just to, I think what I don't have visually is the modeling that we're basing our activities on right now um that does that make sense yeah um, I don't I don't know if um if if Alice or Alex want you want to come in and respond and respond to that yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll try and respond, Luan. I, I, I absolutely uh, understand what, what you're saying. Um, and um, we, we was just in a conversation with Fiona Franci uh, last night. She's she's trying to pull together um, a report for uh, Pan uh, Grampian Operation Home First, where we're at just now. Um, and funnily enough, we were we were talking about that that we we, we probably need to do a bit of mapping um, against the aims. Um, you know what each of the the the, the uh, partnerships um, projects are, and what population it, it impacts on, um, and therefore have, have have we got it all covered? I guess sort of take a, a step back from uh, uh, Operation Home First and and and. Uh, bashing away at, at, at cracking on with the projects um uh, but actually you know what does this mean have we got it covered or is and is there are, are there any gaps um so we were just chatting with um colleagues in Murray who were wrestling with the the, the, the same kind of uh, issue um uh, and they they have started to do a bit of that work um so what I've suggested is um that we kind of get together and do it collectively um for on a grampian basis but obviously that will um 
that will impact on on the city as well. So uh, we we may be able to bring that 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 work back. Um, it's at a very very early stage, I would suggest. Um, so I'm not sure how quickly we're we're, we're going to be able to do that. But um, certainly Murray have started with with some ideas, um, and I think we can build on that and and, and use that for our purposes as well. OK, thanks, Alison. I totally recognise it's hugely complex and not, not an easy thing to do, but it, it's just when you see the individual flash reports, there's so many connects and so much de of success of one area depends on another one working that it's the over the big picture would give the assurance. Yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly where Fiona was coming because Fiona was having to, she was tasked with writing a report and, and she had all of the flash reports and all of the individual reports. And I think she was kind of scratching her head and saying, oh my goodness, how do, how do I make sense of all of this? So um, that's where that has uh, has come from. So we'll see okay. what we can do. Okay, thank you. If I can have one final question, then I'll, there's other people I'm sure want to okay, speak yeah. as well. I just wondered about the quality aspect of you know, the changes we're doing and how much we're using national data around things like that atlas of variations. And just to give assurance that we're not we're not becoming an outlier because we're we're delivering things differently. So are there atlas atlas of variations that we can use to provide that assurance that we're 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 still delivering services that are safely and effectively? Um I think from uh, from, from from our perspective uh well, I suppose the short answer is yes, if if that's if that's appropriate. Um, we've got uh, very close links with uh, College from Public Health Scotland, and um, they've got a very very strong overview of the national picture in terms of those in terms of those national data sets that you were describing. So where possible and when we can link into them, then that's great. But we also recognise that quite often local contexts have localised priorities, and in some instances. Um, it maybe isn't appropriate to use those national data sets, um, but when we combine the, the national level and the local level, that gives us that much richer and that fuller picture about the overall impact. So short answer is yes, when appropriate, we, we will use national when it is less appropriate and we need to develop something for a much more localised context. We will do that and it's about, like I said, it's the sum of those constituent parts that give us that overall picture. Thanks, Callum. That's really helpful. Thank you. OK, thank you, Ryan. Um, any other questions or comments on this? OK, I'm not seeing anybody else uh, signal. I, so if I can come in um, with one or two, um, just to clarify, uh, Callum, uh, you were saying you've been commissioned by all of the chief officers here. So is the piece of work going to report across the, the system or is it going to report for Aberdeen City or, or both? Um, so so I think it can be it can be both um, if that would be if that would be helpful for um, the, the committee to be updated on on progress and um, there is a home first steering group which uh, uh, Sandra Ross, Sandra McLeod, sorry, um, uh, sits on along with the other chief officers um, across the other IGB areas. So um, this working group um, that's being created will, will report directly into that. But um, if uh, the committee feel that reports into, into here would be beneficial, then that's um, absolutely something that uh, we can do as well. Um, yeah, I mean, clearly uh, the report about the city is, is, is important, but given that a lot of this is on a cross system basis, having sight of that, I think would help us join the dots. Um, uh, so if, if people are in agreement with that, I think given that it's going to be produced, it, it would be helpful for us. Um, and and can link to that, um, just to clarify from the report, at 3.2, there's the 11 transformations listed. And then at 4.8, it's got four of them listed as impacting on the city. So can you just square that for me. Um, yes, yeah, so um, so the original 11 were the um, transformations that were embedded uh, during the, the COVID period. Um, and then the second list refers to those to those priorities which are currently ongoing. So some of those original um, transformations that were embedded are now essentially business as usual. 
um, and the, the, the following ones are continuing uh, priorities uh, moving forward. And those are the ones that you'll be evaluating? Yes. The, the four rather than the 11, OK. Um, uh, and then just a comment, I had a question which was along the lines of what, what Luan had asked, and so I think that, that is important for us in that kind of top line modelling. So I, I would just make an observation around that, which is, um, although it can be can seem a bit tricky, one of the ways into that is simply to ask what are we currently assuming, i.e. making assumptions explicit, because we are spending money, we are intervening, there are projects that, that we are doing, simply by asking what are the assumptions behind those actually surfaces the, the current modelling. There may be some gaps in it or, or whatever, but actually that's a very simple way into it uh, because it does exist, even if it's if it's implicit. So um, that's that's just a suggestion uh, or a comment uh, around that. Um, what what you've also got in the report, which is helpful, is looking towards the new strategic plan. Um, so if I can just uh, pick up on that, the so we've got 18 months or so before a new strategic plan is in place. I'm assuming it's April 2022. OK, um, that's fine. And so what you'll be doing is working in the meantime with the, uh, you, you mentioned the local um, empowerment groups, but I think you're also intending to involve the other networks and, and community links with carers and, and various groups as well. Is that is that correct? Yes, we're, we're, we're actually planning to, to start on that next month. Um, you're, you're absolutely right in terms of your timing. The, 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 the current strategic plan runs until March 2022, so we should have our new one in place for April um, 22. Um, and absolutely our, our intention uh, or our intended approach this, this time round is um, a, as much co-production as we can achieve. Um, and obviously, uh, COVID and social distancing gives us challenges in that, but um, I'm, I'm sure we'll find uh, ways around that. Um, so we would be, in terms of a, a sort of a broad timeline for the, the next strategic plan, um, we would be looking to bring a consultation draft for approval to the IJB at its meeting, um, at its last meeting of calendar year 2021. So whether that's towards the end of November or beginning of December, Derek can maybe help me out. I'm not entirely sure what, what, about the actual date of the meeting yet, um, but but we would intend to bring um, that uh, a consultation draft to that meeting, um, which which probably means we've got until about October to, to get that consultation draft um, prepared. Um, so we're really down to, into the, the sort of 12 month planning period. Um, so as I say, we're, we're, we're planning to start next uh, next month. We've got the strategic planning group obviously um, set up. We've got we, representat representation around that. Um, as you mentioned, we've got the locality empowerment groups, um, which are, are, are really being very well developed at the minute. Um, and we'll reach out in, into there. Our starting point is actually going to be um, our annual report, um, you, you'll have heard the discussion uh, at the IJB recently um, around the annual report and uh, the fact that we're looking at um, doing a little summary uh, key messages document. Um, so where the, the, the first stage is that we will take that around the locality impairment groups and um, Discuss that with them to see, you know, how you know how does that sit with them? Do they recognise um, some some of the, the the facts and figures that that we've presented there, um, and try and get them to think about their priorities and uh, for uh, and and the the, the specific um, needs of of their locality, um, and start that conversation, um, which hopefully will work its way across the the the, the twelve months towards. Okay, so what needs to be the priorities for the the, the partnership um, 
for its uh, refreshed uh, strategic plan. Um, and absolutely, it won't just be uh, locality impairment groups that are involved in that. Um, we will try and get as far and wide across the partnership as we can, uh, using a number of um, already established groups, as you say, the carers, uh, group is um, a, a, a good example of that, but there are, are many other uh, groups that, that we can use um, to ensure that we uh, consult on, on that as widely as possible and that the, the draft that we bring you for, for uh, formal public consultation, if you like, um, next uh, towards the end of next year um, will be as fully co-produced, as I say, as we can make it. OK, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and I suppose just one one final uh, question would be, um, it's really uh, good to see what's proposed here in terms of the evaluation of what, what is going on and then um, the way you presented that they looking towards the next plan um, uh, and you're going to bring back uh, some work around what uh, Luan had raised. I, I see that the synthesized report around the evaluation will be around about June of next year. Um, so uh, it, it strikes me that it might be helpful for um, there to be at least an informal session of, of um, all of the IJB members around that evaluation and where things are going in terms of the new plan, just so we can start to, to, to bring things together. I, I don't know if other members would find that helpful and, and if officers have any comment on that. Carol? Yeah. yeah, sorry, rather than just plotting in, I was going to say, um, <laughs> yeah, there's absolutely no issue with that at all. And and, and um, whilst there might be, a again, a formal shiny report in, in, in June, we will have um, findings which will be quite clear and evident prior prior to that, that we can we can bring along and discuss as and when they emerge. Um, and naturally, this is going to directly feed into the refresh of the strategic plan. So if that's um, if that type of session would be would be helpful, then we're more than happy to um, to facilitate that. Um, OK, thank you. Uh, and I suppose that's a su suggestion. So we, we can maybe um, ask uh, Luan and, and Sarah, along with the chief officer and Alex, to, to work out what, what's most appropriate in terms of timing and, and, and what's done there. Luan, did you want to come in? Well, no, just to say, yeah, I'll pick that up um, when we're planning agendas and seminars and stuff to get the most appropriate time for that. OK, um, you got your hand yeah, up, I, you have a question? Oh. OK, Alison? Yes, yeah, sorry, uh, uh, if I could just come in in terms of the strategic plan, absolutely, we, we would be planning to involve the, the IJB at various points along that 12 month uh, planning period. So we would probably be, be bringing back um, sort of reports, reports on initial feedback, um, you know, from some of these planning sessions and perhaps some initial suggestions as to where we, we might think um, the strategic plan might go. At the minute, we've got five strategic aims. Um, you know, perhaps there might be some early indications that, that, that we might either drop one of them or change uh, change them. Um, so it's that kind of thing we would be checking in with the IGB um, all the way along the, the, the planning process. Good, OK, that, that, that's good. Um, so. Any other questions or, or comments uh, committee members would like to offer? OK, um, Luan. Thanks, um, John. It was just when I was reading the flash reports and the activity around the integrated access point, um, and then I was also reading the, the work around the stepped care model that, that's been developed, and it struck me you know, what are the what are the connects between the two? Because, you know, is there, you know, I suppose I'm thinking, are we developing a social model and a medical model and are we developing them separately? Or is there, is there a sort of, I suppose I'm thinking they're both direct access points for the public, but one's about, you know, getting help with access to groceries or whatever, and the other one's more medical. But is there something about the connecting the two of them into to a single point or is that... Am I, am I barking up a wrong tree there? 
Um, so I suppose there's a little bit of context. Um, we've got uh, Susie on the call as well, who's um, le leading this stepped care work. So she can answer from that perspective. I mean, from the integrated access point, you're, you know, you're absolutely right. This is to do with a single point of contact for individuals living in the living in the community. Um, but this is not just for um, social care services. Um, the scoping piece of work that has been done comprise of all of the delegated services to the partnership. So that's not just on the council side and also on the health side. And as part of, of that piece of work, it's about thinking right well, what phasing or is most appropriate to begin to try and amalgamate amalgamate these these together. Um, from the from the step care side, um, not all of the services within that, for example, are ones that individuals might uh, directly self-refer into. So, for example, if we have um, the hospital home service and they're looking at to accelerate discharge out of hospital, that would be a professional referral in that instance, as opposed to a as opposed to a self-referral. And um, so this is why it's I suppose it's particularly useful that Susie and I sit in the same team so we can have these we have these direct conversations um, uh, about this and we can make sure that there isn't um, a duplication or a or a or contrast, I suppose, um, of work. Um, Susie, I don't know if you want to come in on that. You know, you've actually given kind of a, a summary of it, but I suppose, sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, um, is that th th that is the difference, actually. This The integrated access point is for public access into it. The step care approach, although it is not just professionals, the majority of the work, as Calm's mentioned, around hospital at home and also the, so the, I don't know if you've seen the triangle, but the red and amber um, are both mo uh, more around the multidisciplinary team, um, which includes our providers and includes, you know, partnership in the biggest sense, um, but around health and social care to provide the rapid, rapid wraparound services for our individuals and patients in the community. So it's slightly different, but they are absolutely connected. So, and also the other thing to mention is step care is, is more around the unscheduled care. So moving unscheduled care into planned care. Um, not all the services, some of the services you can self-refer into, but that's not necessarily the purpose of um, the step to care approach. So they they actually completely align. So it, it, it's quite interesting you mentioned that. So again, that's maybe a demonstration of the flash reports sitting separately. Don't always show you the linkages. Um, and we know that, but we maybe haven't communicated that well. Um, so um, yeah, and uh, as Callum says, we, we you know we sit side by side, and all all the projects are we do align them, and, and we have huddles and conversations, and um, that's part of our kind of risk conversations, and I'm making sure that they are linked. But it's maybe not being demonstrated in the way that we're presenting that information. So I think that that's a helpful question to ask, actually. Thanks, and and I think it makes perfect sense how you've described that the professional kind of lead bit there, but it, it demonstrates, I suppose, the need for the the big picture on the on the bottom on the on the top of the jigsaw puzzle box that that shows how everything connects up, and that we're not doing siloed work in, which is you know which would be the risk. But I'm very happy with with your responses, so thank you for that. I, I did have an, a a point on the integrated access point. Are we involving commission services in that as well? Because I'm thinking. There will be some commission service that already provide direct access for particular care groups. So just again, I'm thinking about not doing that duplication um, working. Yeah. Sorry. So I'll I'll jump in there. So so the the one service that we have um, one commission service at the moment that we've um, liaised with around this is is Bonacore Care in terms of the the sheer size of them and and how much care that they provide. And um, it was felt as a as an initial first phase. It would probably be. Um, I don't want to say easier, but in terms of making sure that it was it was partnership services, um, those would be the ones that, um, given in mind the complexity of this, it probably makes sense to start in house. And um, if if we show that that works and 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 it's 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 good and all that sort of thing, then we can see about how we would expand that out. But in this first phase, the immediate priority is those services that are within our remit, and the specific focus is on the services that you can self refer into and the services where self-referral is the primary route in, so it's how most people access those services. So that's the first piece of the elephant, if that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, thank you Van. I mean, I'm, I'm not seeing anybody else uh, signalling, so I think we've um, 
um, come to the conclusion for, for this item. So thank you very much to everybody who has um, contributed to that and, and presented on it. Um, if we can go to the recommendations, um, we're asked to note the information provided in the report. Um, can I just suggest, um, Derek, that what, what we do is, is note, uh, that, so this is just clearer for the public record of the minute, that we note the approach to the evaluation of the impact of Operation Home First and note the plans for refreshing the strategic plan. Um, is that acceptable to everybody as, as a recommendation? Yes, absolutely. Okay, and to the committee members, you're happy with that? Yes. That's okay, um, that's fine. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so if we can go to the final item then, which is um, for confirmation of, of assurance. Uh, so from committee members, uh, I can just ask if you've received sufficient assurance from the reports presented that we're fulfilling our duties. I'm assuming everybody's content. Yes. I don't see anybody signalling, so yes. that's that's the case. Thank you. Okay. Well, that that brings us to the end of of this meeting. Um, thank you once again to everybody um, for your contributions. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Just before everyone. we all disappear, Chair, I can just let you all know that there will be a report going to the IGB in October with a timeline of dates for meetings up till March 22, which will allow some of the timelines around strategic plan work to be put in place. Thank you. Cheers, Alison. Thanks, Derek. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.